Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Let's see what you're playing in October 1982. We were last checking out Commando Raid on the Atari VCS. Let's see what's next. Coming up next is a brand new console. We're going to check out the Intex Adventure Vision, starting with the first release, Defender. Official Defender, too, not just some rip-off Defender. The Adventure Vision, if you were to pop it open inside, the CPU has an Intel 8048 running at 733 kilohertz. For memory, it has 64 bytes and one kilobyte of video RAM. For the sound, it actually has its own dedicated sound. And for the very first time, it has an audio jack that you can plug in for headphones if you got them. But what makes this interesting is the display. It's a 150 by 40 monochrome display. But the most interesting part is it is using oscillating red LEDs, which means that there's a single vertical column of 40 LEDs and there's a rotating mirror inside to give you this unique uh, display or look of the game, which means the games that we check out today aren't going to give you the full experience. You'd have to see it for yourself. But this platform is so rare. Not only is it only four games released for this console, but if you happen to have it in the wild, majority of them have broken. It turns out there's only less than 100 that might be working still. So if you got one, you're probably not even using it. You're probably having it in a museum. All right, so let's check out Defender. This one is based on the game that we played in the arcade back in February 1981. And since then, we've seen the sequel Stargate, which was October 1981. And then the official version on the Atari 2600 in June 1982. So this one is the fourth official Defender that you could play at home. Let's take a look at the box of the Adventure Vision for Defender. Yes. Includes one interchangeable cartridge and instruction booklet for Adventure Vision. The tabletop cartridge system is what it calls here. Now, the Adventure Vision is considered a platform as, as console, like all the other consoles we played. But this doesn't look or act like a console. And uh, I'll get to, into it more whenever we, we, we play the game. The front of the box doesn't have the same artwork for Defender either that we saw on the Atari. This is brought over by Williams. I don't know for sure if they did the, the development themselves in-house. So there you go. The Adventure Vision Defender cartridge is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up and one of the first space shooters to feature the freedom to move left or right <laughs> like it's a brand new thing. Maybe if you consider this a handheld, but it's not a handheld. You have a HUD located at the top of the screen that indicates the UFOs where they're located, and the goal is to achieve as many points as possible. We've heard that one before. I have always wanted to see one of these systems in person myself. I just looked over in the chat, and that's kind of what this is, Chiptune. It is like a proto-virtual boy, but uh, I've never seen one myself to physically play this one. So through the world of emulation, I don't know how well it's going to work. We'll see, we'll see what happens. So here we go. Other artwork we have for Defender. Besides the box, the ad you would have seen for the Adventure Vision or the box itself Right here, it says no TV required because you have the screen yourself. The system is a little bit larger than some of the other tabletop handhelds we play, but just by a little bit. You know, the Pac-Man handhelds or the Coleco handhelds. That's why this one you could play yourself without plugging anything in. It does have a jack for a DC power, but you can plug in four D batteries and this will run by itself. But I mean, it, it, it drains a lot of power. It, it takes, those D batteries don't last very long but you could essentially make this a handheld if you wanted to. So there you go, some more screenshots of the system itself. You got a little joystick in the center and you have two, uh, four, uh, four buttons on either side. So left-handed and right-handed people could play it as well. And then there's the cartridges. If you want to call them cartridges, they're more like ROM chips that you put into the system. And there are only four ROM chips available. That's how rare this console is. We also have the manual for Defender. There you go, it gives us some more specs of the, the console itself. Look at that. It even looks kind of like an arcade cabinet. You know, at the top has a marquee. They show us the uh, all the different uh, mechanics of the game, what the buttons are going to do, because Defender is already heavy on button use in the arcades. So this one, they have the smart bomb, they have the hyperspace, they have our firing control, and then the joystick uses our thrust control. So it doesn't use everything because it's meant to be for the buttons or if you're a left-handed player, and then for the buttons if you're a right-handed player. I know, Marshall, and we're getting close to that other crazy console 2 the vectrex it's coming up soon all right so if we look at the cartridge instructions so this is how to put it in the object of defender score as many points as possible defending the earth and humans from wave after wave of evil invaders from outer space at this point in the show hopefully you know what defender is at this point we played uh this is our 30th defender variant so far across all systems 
Uh, but this is the, our fifth one we've seen on home consoles, aside from the official Defender. And then uh, there's been none that are kind of like Defender as far as handhelds go. So if you consider this a handheld, this is the newest, coolest thing. But if you consider it a console, it's the fifth Defender game. You, you want to make sure all the humans are not stolen and rescue them. We do have the sound options if you want it. The joystick moves up, down, and around. Is that little, uh, little tiny one in the center? You have a button for your smart bomb, a button for hyperspace, a button for fire, and button four is not used at all. There's our scores, because you got to know what all the scores are in 1982. Landers, mutants, pods, swarmers, and bombers. And we even have a tiny radar. How are they going to do a tiny radar in this system? I'd like to see. It shows you what the smart bombs do, and then gives us some game strategies for play and defender. If you played in the arcades, you probably are, are, are familiar with it. I like to see what the Adventure Vision does for it. And then the game's over when all Defender ships have been destroyed. You can reset and begin again. And there we go. We got some kind of mock pictures of what the landers, mutants, pods, and swarmers look like. And the bombers. So cool. All right, here we go. It's time to pop in that ROM chip and play some Defender on the Intex Adventure Vision. Brought over by Williams, published by Intex at some time in the beginning of October 1982. All right, there it is. The system itself with Defender plugged in, you have the four different buttons on either side with a sound button. And if you had an audio jack, you could plug in your headphones on this too. Pretty cool. All right, so we're already beginning. On the center screen, you can see I'm made up of pretty much, it's like one, uh, a few pixels for each, uh, each design, but uh, sound works all right. And you gotta admit, having a, a self-contained console is a new thing. A screen, the sound, everything's coming from one place, and it all can run on 4D batteries is really impressive. And you can understand how this can be confused with a handheld because it looks kind of like other tabletop handhelds. Not that just the ColecoVision ones, we played other handhelds too. But uh, as far as game control, it actually works really smooth. What, what I can't do though is I can't give the, the full experience because it's not necessarily stereo, um, stereoscopic 3D. It's more like oscillating LEDs. It, it's only two colors though, it's only red and black. So anyone that's played newer video handhelds, you know, the Virtual Boy, you get vibes from that. But this is only October 1982. This would be a new experience though to be able to play this and, and see this at home. Look how tiny that mini map radar is at the top. It's amazing. <laughs> Did we already destroy him? Okay, there we go. Next level's coming up. There's our explosion. We don't have a bunch of shrapnel that flies everywhere, like in the arcades. I'd actually be curious if Intex themselves did, did the development and Williams just allowed them to bring over the official Defender, because I'd be surprised if Williams did this or worked on the Adventure Vision port. Oh, he got me. Nice. I know, it's it's a very large leap, but that's, that's, that was if you consider this a handheld. Every source that talks about the Adventure Vision calls it a console. Rather than a handheld like the other ones. Oh, we got one mutoid that started off. As far as consoles go, I'd actually say this one doesn't feel like it plays as well or is as fun as Defender that we played on the Atari 2600. But visually, would something that looks different, would you consider that better than the Atari VCS or not? Yeah, it is a little bit limited, but yeah, it's playable and works really well. Wipe them out. There you go. Oh, that's my hyperspace jump. Oh, my hyperspace jump right into somebody. <laughs> yeah, so control is tight. It feels really good. To use the tiny little joystick, though, I'm not sure, you know, if on, the, on the, the system itself, how well it would work. We're just running into people left and right. There you go. I'll just use a couple bombs and blow them away. And you can see at the minimap right at the top, nothing's happening now. But uh, sadly, this means that i got to be rating this across all the other games you could be playing on other home consoles, which the ColecoVision's out there. I mean, how can you compare this to the ColecoVision? This feels more like we're playing a, uh, a tabletop handheld. But I'm going to concede and say this is a home console. This is not a handheld system. The way that it looks, because it's LED, and the way that it plays, 
makes it feel like it's a tabletop handheld. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the, the hyperspace can just warp you into some random spot and you die. So there you go. That's Defender, the first game that we're playing on the Intex Adventure Vision. Of all the games you could play right now on home consoles, there's only five other titles that are Defender-like that, that can be played on home consoles. And nothing's on handhelds. I'm going to actually say for Defender, this one is a title that would give you an experience you've never seen before because th visually this is something brand new. It's different. And uh, they're trying something as a risk. You know, let's, let's see what happens with this kind of technology to see what it is. I'm looking over the chat, and I can see a five. <laughs> it could be a five, at least Brian says. And he, but two and a half on anything else? Yeah, I would say around um, a, a average, maybe a, a subpar. Yeah, amazing is what Manly's saying. Four stars for what it's worth. I'm thinking still around the average range for games you could play on a home console because uh, this is something new and different, but as far as gameplay goes, it's still pretty simplistic. The Atari, the Atari VCS Defender, I would rate it as the better one. Yeah, I'm seeing four stars from Jeff. Yeah, so we'll obviously say, let's say above average because this is going to be something you see differently. We'll say three and a half stars of all the games right now on a home console because it is above average, but you know it's not do doing or pushing anything better or different uh, gameplay-wise than the other systems. So there you go, three and a half from Obsidian Arcade as well. And that's right, there's only four games for the system, which means we get to see them all. All the games for the Intex Adventure Vision. Coming up next, it's Space Force for the Intex Adventure Vision. Let's check it out, starting with the box. Space Force, oh man, now this one is a Asteroids game, and the front of the box actually looks very Asteroids-ish. Your mission is to command the mothership through the meteor shower and destroy Zera. Zera? Zeral? And Zinak. <laughs> they already have some lore or aliens we gotta blow up. For the Adventure Vision tabletop cartridge system. There we go, they got an example of a screenshot in the back, just showing you a few of the pixels. The, your phaser cannon, they have, they have to break them down because it's kind of hard to tell exactly what it is. Adventure Vision Space Force cartridge is based on the famous Venture Line arcade game and includes all key features of its b big brother. Does everyone remember Space Force? Probably not. We saw this one in the arcade in 1980, and this is the very first time it was ported at home. So Space Force was kind of like space in, uh, kind of like uh, asteroids, the exact same thing. This is the only game on the Intex Adventure Vision that allows for two players, but it's alternate play. What else do we have for Space Force besides the box? We have an ad you would have seen from magazines at the time showing you the state of the art for 1982 and beyond. Showing off the system and then a few of the ROM chips down at the bottom. Uh, some of the other games we're going to be checking out. And it also shows the dimensions, I believe. Yeah, the weight, 3.5 by 10 by 9. So you can tell it's a little bit larger than some of the other handheld tabletops that are out there. <laughs> and if you got this for Christmas, this would be so cool to have something brand new that r responds and acts like this. And then there's the ROM chip for Space Force. We won't go through any screenshots. Let's take a look at the manual and see how to play some Space Force. It should just play like the arcade. And it's almost like the Adventure Vision is trying to do what ColecoVision did, which is let's license some official arcade games and bring them home. There's some of the controls we're going to need to know to play. That's where you insert the program cartridge in the center. And then object of the game in Space Force is score as many points as possible, repelling attack wave after attack wave of evil alien spaceships. Unfortunately, the battle takes place in a meteor shower, because it's like asteroids. We can rotate 360 degrees and shoot and kill as many alien spaceships as possible. For controls, it's the same as all the games on the Intex Adventure Vision. Our joystick's going to move us around clockwise and counterclockwise. Pulling it back reverses the cannon, and you can instantly move the cannon to 6 o'clock position if you want to. And it shows here, this is how you can switch between one and two player mode, but you're just alternate play. You have a button to fire, and is there a hyperspace jump? I don't think there is, because Space Force, when it was in the arcades, that was before we got Asteroids Deluxe. All right, there we go. There's our scores, getting the highest score possible. As usual, attacking Zenak and Zeral ships, whatever that means. Yeah, it was around 80 bucks. That's correct, Jeff. That's what I saw, at least. Uh, and for the ads that I've seen in magazines... 80 bucks wasn't too bad for a console. I mean, think about it. Most of them were uh, even more expensive than that. Oh, I know. But the Vectrex, we don't know what that is right now. Like, at, at this moment in time. I'll pretend I don't know. But, yeah, that one is going to be even bigger than this. All right, so we have the alternate play mode. And then a few strategies for Space Force. If you're familiar with Asteroids, you kind of got the idea. And then at the end, end of the game, whenever all ships are destroyed or lives are done. And then they kind of tell you about some other games for the Adventure Vision. 
We don't need to know. We're going to play them. It's time to pop in and play Space Force. This one's by Venture Line, published by Intex at some time in the beginning of October 1982. I even said some. I even saw some sources that this was the end of September 1982. So uh, I'm I'm, I'm st stating it right here. It's probably beginning of October. All right. So how many players do we want? Let's go ahead and push a one-player game. I think that's one player, and we're in. So I have my shift to move around. Oh, it even has the thumping sound, like from Asteroids. Which the one in the arcade was, it was really close to playing like the original Asteroids. Yeah, so it's Asteroids. Straight riff on it, but now you're getting to play it with a really, really cool LED display. And it's a different way to ever see the game before, too, because, you know, this was originally using the vector-based graphics in the arcades. And then there's lots of ones that using raster graphics in the arcades, and then all the, the variants we've played or seen so far. But just like I said with Defender, the control feels good. Oh, wait, we got slow down. Whoa, it's starting to slow down with all the asteroids on the screen. <laughs> That's true, you can't, Manly. This also marks one of the first times that a home console can be both simultaneously console and on the go. You can put some batteries in and then take it for, I think all I saw was an hour. <laughs> That's all you would get on 4D batteries. I don't know how, how, how much your dad's willing to fork out 4D batteries for you to play one hour on this system, though. <laughs> yeah, sounds sharp, really good. And when you think of all the games we play on home consoles, this would be a full experience. It'd be fun. In the same regard, though, I can understand why this one didn't do so well is because it's trying something and experimenting on something that wasn't tested yet. Also, it's not forcing people to put their eyes in the, you know, directly on the screen so you, your retinas won't get burned out. <laughs> okay, when I get a lot of slowdown there, it was slowing down with more of the asteroids flying around. Too cool. So there's an example of Space Force on the brand new Adventure Vision. So at this point, we played about 41 Asteroids variants across all platforms. On uh, home consoles, this one's our third that we played across all home consoles, aside from the official Asteroids that you could play. So um, I think official Asteroids on the Atari VCS, uh, this one's pretty good. It actually works really well. And uh, I'm going to say, the kind of like Defender, this one is an experience that you couldn't have as uh, anything else on home consoles. So I'm going to say for Asteroids clones, it's actually above average when you think of the games you could play on home platforms. Uh, or, or home consoles, I mean. For home computers, that's a whole different space. We're not going to be rating it against all those. Mainly seeing about three stars or pretty average for the games you could play on home consoles. I'm still thinking around the average range. Defender had a little more meat to it, you know, more gameplay. But this one's still around the average range, so I'm going to say three stars. Yeah, we'll say just average. Because the uh, formula in this game has been used quite a bit. Of uh, quite a bit. All right, let's see what's next. Coming up next is Turtles on the Intex Adventure Vision. Let's check it out. Here's the box for Turtles. We originally saw this one as Turpin in Japan in the arcades in 1981, and then it was Turtles in the arcade in North, North America in January 1982. We've even got one port already for a home console on the Emerson Arcadia 2001 in May 1982. So this one is the second time you could officially play Turtles. Rescue the Turtlets from the clutches of the menacing beetles. Cool cartoony artwork there. Let's flip it over the back. I know, before that turtle craze, this is a totally different one. It's based on the famous Konami arcade game, includes all key features and elements of its big, big brother. Which, by the way, the arcade conversions here on this console have been pretty faithful. Defender was very well done, and at, well, I'm sorry, Space Force was very well done. It wasn't official Asteroids. And so the Turtles, we're going to see how well this one works. You got six Turtle S you got to take home, just like we played in the arcade. And then on the back of the box, they aren't pulling any punches. Notice they give you the actual kind of screenshot of what the game is and explain what everything is, which is kind of nice. I like it. What else do we have for Turtles? 
There we go, another ad you would have seen. This is the March 1983 one talking about the Intex Adventure Vision. All four games are displayed or talked about here and uh, gives you a preview of, or showing you what the, the console's like. Probably is a last hurrah because I believe after 83, this, this one had no more sales. You have four games, uh, that's it. All right, so there you go. Turtles with our ROM chip by Intex. Awesome. I know, it depends if you like Turtles, if you liked it in the arcade or not. All right, let's see how to play some Turtles on the Adventure Vision. Once again, there's the console itself, showing you the phone jack, sound, the bug button, which I think that's all we need, right? Yeah, all four of those buttons aren't even used. We just need to push one of them for the joystick and then drop in some bugs. Shows us how to insert the cartridge here. It's patented after the world-famous Turtles video arcade game by Konami. Is it world-famous? I, I wouldn't say so. Depends on your mileage. The object of Turtles is to score as many points as possible by rescuing cute little turtle turtlets from mystery squares and taking them to the safety house while avoiding the evil attacking beetles. You control the movement of the turtle, which always starts out in the lower left corner of the display screen. If you're successful in releasing a turtlet from a mystery square to a safety house, that'll appear in one of the four corners of the display screen. It may sound easy, but beware, for behind two of the mystery squares are extra attacking beetles, which once released will chase you until the entire floor is cleared of turtlets. So just bear in mind, this is essentially a Pac-Man variant, and we've already seen one officially on another home console. So it's like, do, do you want to play a game kind of like Pac-Man, but uh, is it going to be better than the other ones? Uh, we'll, we'll see when we boot it up. We have a defensive weapon. It's the Bug Bomb. I know, right? This would be really, really cool, Marshall, to see. I agree. Yeah, I know. They didn't have anything on Frogger here on the Antex Adventure Vision, mainly. Only these four games. So the joystick shows us our controls. It'll be a maze game like Pac-Man. And then you can't see the, the buttons only use one for the bug bomber. We have our point scores, getting the turtle to rescue. And there's an example of a screenshot again telling us what everything is. The beginning of the game in each round will be displayed in the score. And then given some game strategies, which I don't think we got game strategies on the Emerson Arcadia 2001 port. So what are some good strategies? Using bug bombs. Okay, thanks. That's helpful. And there's eight different levels. Hey, eight different levels and floors. I think that's what the arcade has. With eight mystery squares, six of the mystery squares contain turtlets. So, uh, cool port. End of the game is overall. Turtles have been destroyed by attacking beetles. Very nice. Got it. All right, let's pop in and play some Turtles. This is by Konami. Brought over by Intex at sometime in the beginning of October 1982. We got a little ditty for turtles before we play. Really nice. And I think we just go. Yep. Player begins. Three lives. Three bug bombs. And we're in. I'm in the bottom left corner as the turtle. Pick up a question mark and see what happens. Okay, I got a turtlet. And then you make your way over to the house, which just appeared in the bottom left corner. All right, I got my bug bomb button. All right, so now we go to the next question mark block. No, oh, I call it a block. It's really not a block. And I pick up another turtlet. Make our way to the house. Oh, gosh. Oh, one of the um, one of the turtles or one of the um, bugs ran over my bug bomb. All right, got him in the house. When he runs over the bug bomb, it makes an alarm sound. Actually, in a way, this is faithful as as much as the Immersed Arcadia 2001 port was. You you find a turtleette and you go to the house. And if you're wondering, you know, what's the randomness of it to happen? Because this isn't a very complicated maze like a Pac-Man game. It's, it's still essentially a maze-style game, but there's a chance you could get uh, something bad. Yeah, this one's playing pretty, pretty simple. We're not getting any uh, the, the crazy randomness or weird randomness that we had for um, the uh, arcade version. Uh, they didn't take the bait there. Well, let's see if I can go around this way. <laughs> I don't even think right now Eastman and Laird have made Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's October 1982. We did it. Going to the next floor. They even have a cutscene. I was... I'm very surprised the Adventure Vision has that. <laughs> yeah, the Adventure... The, 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 oh, now we get different sound. Okay. For the next level... before I got the bug bomb down. 
So we got a variety of music, uh, not different maze, but different level types. You can see it slightly changed up just a little bit. And then following it as close as they can to the arcade. So very well done for a home console game. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, if people haven't been watching the show since the beginning, the, the, the variety of music and the kind of music we hear is going to be based on everything you've seen so far from, you know, from the beginning. <laughs> That's true, Marshall. So there you go, a quick taste of Turtles on the Intex Adventure Vision. I actually got to say, this one is pretty close to what we played on the Emerson Arcadia 2001 console. So I'm going to say around the same rating, but you're obviously going to get a, a visually feast, a, a ch change of visual visuals because of the uh, oscillating LED. So I'm going to say three and a half stars of all the games you could play right now on a home console. Obsidian's with me with three and a half, and Brian and Manley are just saying three. It also depends on how much you like Turtles, if that's your cup of tea or not. All right, and finally, the, the last game of the Intex Adventure Vision. This is Super Cobra. Let's check it out. Starting with the box. Oh, nice. So that's new artwork. Super Cobra hasn't looked like that before. It's awesome. Fly your Super Cobra helicopter on a mission to the secret enemy base. And let's flip it over on the back. Yeah, it's based on the famous Konami arcade game and includes all key features and elements of the Big Brother. You're the pilot and your chopper awaits a full of fuel, full of fuel and armed with Sidewinder missiles and bombs. Fly the helicopter over 10 different terrains. So this has 10 levels, just like the arcade version. That's awesome. With an example of a picture there. Yeah, this is what's considered the killer app, Ryan. That's right. Here we go. So besides the box, we also have another ad you would have seen in the catalog showing the tabletop or counter-revolution self-contained tabletop cartridge system, the Intex Adventure Vision. And there it is on the ROM chip to play. Super Cobra, so cool. So we originally saw this in the arcades in June 1981. This is the first time that Super Cobra has officially come home, right here on the Adventure Vision. There's some more stats and buttons of what we do. The object of Super Cobra is score as many points as possible. That's got to be the theme of the Adventure Vision. Flying your Super Cobra helicopter through 10 levels of, of terrain. Each level has different elements that will try to shoot your helicopter down. At the end of the 10th level is the secret enemy base, just like the arcade. And it contains the booty, which has to be carried away. And if you complete all rounds, then you pick it, pick it up and recycle back to the first level. Wow, that's awesome. 10 levels? That's amazing. And then you can see here they break down the, the controls. Joystick moves your helicopter around. We have a bomb to drop. Uh, one, uh, two bombs explode. And then button three fires straight ahead. So it's just like the controls for Super Cobra. Wow, nice. And there's the uh, example of the screenshot. Breaking down what everything is. Your fuel gauge, which you'll need that too. So cool. We saw Super Cobra in the arcades pretty much around the same time as Scramble. And we've called all those these style of games Scramble variants. As mentioned earlier, the object is to score as many points as possible. Keep an eye on the tank emplacements and rockets. And last of all, use all your senses. That's the best advice any game's ever given us. <laughs> nice. And then you have the uh, form at the, bo the bottom. All right, let's pop in and play some Super Cobra. This is brought over by Konami, published by Intex at some time in the beginning of October 1982. Which, by the way, when we were back playing Turtles... Um, that was the, our 112th Pac-Man game, Turtles was. It was the 12th one we've seen on consoles after the official Pac-Man. And then on handhelds, if you want to call this a handheld, there was the uh, Intex already had Pac-Man. That was available for their select -a game handheld. But we're not on handhelds. This is a console. All right, here we go. The way you pick your selection is it's telling you how many lives you want right now. Whenever you move the joystick, that's how many lives you'll play with. If you select no lives, which just has Cobras, it goes into where you don't get points, but you can go for as long as you want without having to, to, to ever lose. You, you can just keep trying to get through all the levels, which is a really cool feature. All right, here we go. Where's my shot? There it is. Where's my bomb? Got it. All right, we're set. So this is scramble variants or scramble style games. <laughs> and the only one we played on home consoles has been Cosmic Avenger that was on the ColecoVision. So this one's kind of rare. Whoa, how do you get through that hole? It was so small. <laughs> I know, it's amazing. The smooth scrolling is awesome on this. I'm amazed. Look at that. It scrolls over to the side too. On 
home computers, we played a lot of Scramble variants. But home consoles, something that plays like Scramble or like this, Super Cobra, is really rare. So this was a, a, a fun treat because this one is a home console game. I mean, think of um, like a game like Vanguard is out there right now. Oh, it didn't get me to get it. Whoa, man, you got to be really pixel perfect to get to that hole. And now I'm, like I play with all the other scramble games, I want to see what the next screen is or see what the next levels are. So I would just keep going over and over and over again. And now with this game, you can turn off the score or turn off the lives and just play. Just keep playing and trying over and over again to get as far as you, you can in Super Cobra. That's so cool. Yeah, the rotor effect's nice too. Gotta make it through. Here we go. Got it. No, and I got blown up on the other side. <laughs> that gun turret was ready for me. And, of course, there's been nothing on handhelds that resemble anything like Scramble. If you were to consider this a handheld, but we do not here. It appears it's not playing or showing too much you know, on, on the screen. It actually feels really smooth, like I'm able to control smoother than before. Oh, we made it through. Nice. Can I speed up and go faster? Let's move to the right. How fast did the scrolling go? There we go. 1,000 miles. So level one's done. Now you make it to level two, and they have more and more challenges, or they change up you know, the, the different uh, obstacles you got to get through. All right, here we go. It even has the jumping. Wow. Uh oh. oh. And also notice that it's almost. It's breaking some of the walls away. Like, there's parts that are kind of destructible, which is a nice touch, too. That's a good point, Marshall. Even though I'm dying. Or I feel like the game, uh, you know, you know I'm, I'm losing the, the, the point of the game. It's still really fun because the control feels good. And this experience at home right now is very rare. The only thing that comes close is the Cosmic Avenger on the ColecoVision, at least gameplay-wise. And this one's doing a almost a one-to-one -one what the arcade would have. You know, you're playing all the levels and even the base at the end. So if you were to make it all to 10, 10 levels, plus the, the, the best feature is if you like this in the arcade, but you didn't have um, the, the patience to play or, or the skill to play all 10 levels, um, you, you you now can play them all here because this, this game in the arcade, you couldn't continue or pay to play. You couldn't keep putting coins in and take over where you left off. Super Cobra is the, the arcade game that you have to keep playing straight. And when you die, you start over at the beginning again. There isn't a continue. So at, this is the first time that at home, you could turn it all off and just keep going and just keep playing and trying over and over again. Because um, they, they'll let you do that. It's awesome. See if we can get this one. Oh, I missed it. Whoa, with another tight shot there. Okay, yeah, that's a blast. That's a really, really fun. For a game to play on a home console and for something that's being ported for the first time officially, uh, Super Cobra is excellent. Th this is obviously the killer app for the Intex Adventure Vision, but there you go. That's all four games for the Intex Adventure Vision. We don't rate a console on itself, but this is one of the very first times that we played everything for a platform and then we're done and there's no other ones that come after that. So I'm looking over the chat. Yeah, I'm seeing four from Obsidian Arcade. Brian and Manly are seeing four. Yeah, that's great. I, and I agree. I'm going to say four as well. It's not one of the best games you can play on a home console right now. I would still give it to Vanguard as the notch above. But uh, for everything else, I'm going to say four stars for home console games. Super Cobra is awesome. And if you get a chance to play it for real, this is the game to play. I love it. All right. It's time to put the video game playing on pause. And uh, hopefully your eyes are okay after all that uh, monochrome display, the red and black. Next time on Chronologically Gaming, we're going to play one of the rarest games that you can find on the Atari VCS. And Magic's going to port over another game on the Intellivision. That's it for today, and like I always say, 
Sometimes all you need is two colors to make a great game. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.